Hello the folks, it is TIJ Gaming. Welcome back to the Wolves Beta Save on Football Manager 2021. Today it is time for part four of the series. In today's episode, we have a Boxing Day clash against Aston Villa, a real Midlands derby that at Villa Park. But before that, we travel to Bramall Lane. So two away games today to face Sheffield United, who's had a really poor start to the season, but in their last match they did beat Tottenham Hotspur. So maybe that might just be a sign for Chris Wilder's side. But hopefully, not a positive sign for Chris Wilder's side because amazingly, we have still not picked up a single point away from home yet. In fact, I think in six away games, we have scored once. Absolutely unbelievable. A dreadful start away from home, yet we are unbeaten at home at the Molyneux. The mind absolutely boggles. We are in 10th place at the moment, bang on mid-table. This table is a little bit unrepresentative because, as you can see, there are clubs like Leicester that have played one game less. The likes of Burnley played one game more. You've got Tottenham, for some reason, have only played 10 games, probably because of European commitments and the way that COVID affects the game this year. Expect a few things that are a little bit different. But we sit nicely in 10th place mid-table. 16 points, 6 matches where we've got points, and 6 games where we have lost points. As you can see, our home record, though, 16 points. Played 6 at home, won 5 drawn one but away from home we are last we are the only team in the league not to get a single point away from home we have scored one away from home and conceded 17 at home we've scored 17 and only conceded three and really the, the away record isn't really about the teams we've played we've played Fulham Burnley Crystal Palace Manchester United uh, and Arsenal away from home so, not a massive amount. You'd have expected maybe sort of four points from that. At home, we've played Southampton, Leeds United, Tottenham, West Brom, Villa and Newcastle. You know, they, they are fairly even. I suppose that chucking Manchester United and Liverpool in there makes it a little bit tricky. But there's nothing showing there to say that we've had an easy run at home and that the away form uh, should be any worse. I don't particularly get it. But we've played three games since I was last with you and uh, it, it's pretty positive news apart from an absolute thrashing against Manchester United away from home. I don't know what's happening away from home. I've tried a bit of a different tactic but I thought, you know what, sod it. Let's just play the same tactic as we are at home. It seems to be working at the Molyneux. It works certainly for that game against Aston Villa. Raul Jimenez, now he got into the scoring with that game against West Brom, has finally started uh, banging in the goals. He got the first goal against Aston Villa and Daniel Podence finished it off at 2-0. And as you can see, Raul Jimenez scored all the goals against Newcastle. It was a hat-trick for Jimenez. A very strong game it was for us against Newcastle. 55% um, of possession, 27 shots. And although Newcastle had 7 shots, they weren't until the last 15 minutes. We started to sit back a little bit um, and be a bit more counter-attacking. That's probably why they had the 7 shots. But until the 75th minute, Newcastle didn't have a single shot. The match against Villa as well... It was 50-50, it was I suppose, but there we had 18 shots. We are getting our shooting boots on, and it looks like a little bit more of our scoring boots. But look at that game against Manchester United. I appreciate that comparing Villa and Manchester United is ridiculous. However, we actually had more possession than Manchester United, so our possession football is clearly working, but only four shots. So, Southern isn't quite working away from home, but you would think if we are to get any points away from home, it's got to be today. We're going to play the game against Sheffield United today and Aston Villa. In the FA Cup, we've been drawn against Cardiff in the third round, but that's away from home. So hopefully we can definitely break that duck because that Cardiff game is the next away game after today's two games. Let's get into it then. The team selection. This is exactly the same team that started the last match against Newcastle. I believe I don't think there's any change to this team. Patricio starts in goal. The normal back four you'd come to expect now with Neves and Moutinho in midfield. We've got Troyore and Podence on the two wings. I feel a little bit harsh for Pedro Neto, who's got two goals so far this term, but you just can't keep a dime of Troyore out of the squad. We're going with a positive formation here. We've got Shabani plays an attacking midfielder um, as a shadow striker, and then Raul Jimenez up front. It seems to be a good formation at home. We seem to be able to dominate matches, but away from home, it hasn't quite happened for us yet. But I'm hoping against Sheffield United. They're quite a defensive side naturally, and they have not had a best. They're a great start to the league. So fingers crossed. We can pick up our first three points away from home today. So no gesture. Um, just going to say we wanted to pick up where we left off last time out. It was a 3-0 victory. And I'm, I'm quite happy with that again today. I just really hope that we get a point at least. But to break the duck completely, a draw really isn't enough. I'd love to get the three points against Sheffield United. So let's see how we get on today. Um, I'd just like to thank you guys really. It's been great support to see on the beta so far, and I am saying beta now rather than beta, because I have watched uh, 
Kev's video, Lelujo, and to be fair, it is pronounced beta, so I'll go with that. I'll roll with the beta pronunciation rather than beta, which is the American pronunciation. But once again, a very good start from us in terms of possession. Typical the minute I go to click pause, we've got a highlight, but I don't mind, I guess, if we get a goal from this. But we've had 55% of possession, but we're just not making the chances. Could this be the first chance? Shabani puts it through. Mm, doesn't quite happen. This could be a counter-attack for Sheffield United. Good tackle from Connor Cody, but Billy Sharp does win the ball back. Good tackle there from Shabani, but it all just seems a bit half-hearted. We're not really doing much. Bulldog on the wing. Closed down well, but he's still got the ball into the box. And a good save from Rui Patricio. I really believe that could have been the first goal here at Bramall Lane. But a good kick out from Patricio. The good uh, wing back from Neves there. That's that's impressive. On the wing to try all right. Can he make anything happen? Puts it into Raul Jimenez. Jimenez into the box for Daniel Podent. I don't quite know how that one went in, but we go and take the lead at Sheffield United. It's only our second goal away from home. And in what? I mean, think about it. We've played, is it five games away from home plus this one? For the first time in nearly 500 minutes away from home, we finally take the lead. Of course, that one goal that came against Arsenal away from home was when we were already 2-0 down. But uh, a bizarre goal there. I think it was a deflection, but it's still classed as a Daniel Podence goal. Podence is playing really well. The two wingers are playing well. Um, and, and I think we are playing well. The stats don't lie. Um, we're doing very well at home. Away from home, we're not doing so. But as you can see at the league table, if it stays like it is today, we put ourselves into the top 10. And I think that we've not had a bad start at all. Um, I think the likes of Fulham, who have started brilliantly, therefore might just start to drop off. But at half-time, crucially, um, we are ahead. It seems a bit of a drab game. It seems like that one is really the only big chance that there's been. An XG force of 0.65, which suggests that really there's not really much of an advantage for either side. So if we can get the three points today, I would be absolutely chuffed. This could be an early highlight at the start of the second half. If we could go 2-0 up here, that might just finish things off. Moutinho with the free kick, and it forces a save from Aaron Ramsdale. They've gone for five at the back, so a really defensive formation um, from Sheffield United. So I'm just trying to find the, the instruction. Again, that get creative instruction was really the go-to, and uh, I'm struggling to get any shouts to the players without doing that. So we've gone with Demand more. Um, apparently, Shabani's made a lot of mistakes. That's not great, but you know everyone's allowed an off day. 62 minutes in, 52% of possession. Six shots, four on target. Not the best game in the world, so it might just be one of those that is decided by a single goal. But as I said, crucially, we want to get our first point away from home. Um, Shabani's not playing brilliantly, so we will bring Danny Pacheco on, the only player who can play as an attacking midfielder. And I think this formation does work a 4-2-3-1 against a, a weaker side. Against a stronger side, then we move Pacheco back to a defensive midfielder and obviously not play Pacheco there. Um, but we'll bring him on, we'll bring Pacheco on, a player that's not had the best start, but... We'll see what he's made of, I suppose. Um, and for now, I think we'll just leave it like that. I'm happy just to have the one substitution. And I'm hoping we can have this advantage home by scoring a second goal pretty soon and uh, getting the three points rather than Sheffield United nicking one potentially towards the end of the game. But it's been a very drab game, hasn't it, to get things started. But as I said, I don't really care as long as we can get three points here. Um, ten minutes to go. We're just going to bring back the attacking mentality just slightly to a positive mentality, not counter-attacking, because I think that sometimes defeats the object, actually, when you do a bit of counter-attacking football. Um, it brings the opposition on to you sometimes. Um, two substitutions, then. I suppose it might be time for... Uh, the problem is, that that's the problem, isn't it? We haven't got much depth. I would like to bring Samado off and give him a rest, but we can't. I'm going to bring Connor Cody off, bring Roman Sice on as a centre-back, um, and we're also going to give Adama Traore a rest. We're going to bring Pedro Neto on for him, Again, I feel a bit sorry for Neto, but he doesn't quite fit in at the side at the moment. He's second choice on both wings, so unfortunately he doesn't get a spot. But this would be cracking if we can make it 2-0. Hopefully not a light equaliser for Sheffield United. But that is going to be a penalty. John Egan was uh, shoving Raul Jimenez there. Let's have a look what Paul Tierney is going to decide. I'm glad because I've got a frog in my throat, so I need a drink. I was either going to have to stop the video and cough and splutter everywhere um, or hopefully take a drink. So thank you very much, John Egan, for giving me a break. And my throat is cleared now. And the decision is for a penalty to be awarded. Uh, Raul Jimenez is going to take the penalty. Yep, I agree with that. We haven't had a penalty all season. In fact, I don't think there's been a penalty against us all season. I think there might have been one against Arsenal, possibly. This is definitely our first penalty for us. And if Jimenez can convert, he does. And that should be the first 
Three points away from home of the season. That's that duck broken. Thank goodness for that. And another three points to bolster our um, mid-table hopes, top of the table. I really think we are starting to do well now. This game will put us at nine points from 12. And apart from that absolutely uncharacteristic performance against Manchester Manchester United, sorry, we are in pretty good form. Um, can we make it 3-0? Let's see. Pedro Neto shoots. And a bit of a tame shot there, but... A good performance. If we can have a clean sheet here, then uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. It looks like that's good, like that is what's going to happen. And uh, what a game that was. Again, not the most exciting in the world, but uh, we, we did well there. I'm really happy with that. Um, three points away from home. Looked like the win for Sheffield United against Tottenham was just a, a bit of a fluke. Uh, Raul Jimenez is starting to fire now, and I think that's contributing to our good form. It has to be said. Any interesting matches? Yeah, Newcastle have beaten Fulham. It seems that Fulham's... Uh, time to slide down the table has indeed come now. West Brom beat Burnley four goals to one. That's a fascinating result. Man City beat Chelsea in the early game and Villa beat uh, are beaten by uh, Arsenal. So it looks like that top four, top five are starting to slip away now. Tottenham have had a bad start, haven't they? But uh, I guess if they can get uh, nine points from their three games, they'll be exactly where we are. So it all depends on those next few games. But Southampton are down now. That's a surprise. We beat those guys by five goals to one, of course. But... Yeah, I'm really happy with that against Sheffield United. I'm just hoping that isn't a fluke, but we deserved it. We'd got the majority of possession, and Sheffield United didn't offer anything, so I'm really happy about that. Can we make it two wins out of two and four wins out of five? That'll put us in a really good place in the return fixture at Villa Park against Aston Villa. Well, it looks like it might not be a happy Christmas for Jose Mourinho. Apparently, if he loses against Newcastle, he is out. A bit of a harsh one on Jose Mourinho, I think, but... That is the way football is these days. They've now played 11 matches. They're actually in the relegation zone. Absolutely crazy. They did lose the last one against Manchester City. but uh, Manchester United, sorry, two goals uh, to nil. But I guess that losing against Sheffield United, th they've not looked good at all. Obviously, they lost to us. They lost to Fulham. Um, when was their last win in the Premier League? It was against... I mean, they've beaten Chelsea. That's what's so odd about it. They've beaten Chelsea. They've beaten Leeds. Two decent sides. But if we look at the Europa League, no wonder... Um, that the board are getting fed up. They finished bottom of a group that included FC Michelin, Royal Antwerp and Celtic. That is a shocker from Jose Mourinho. Let's have a look, quick look at how he's doing uh, in the Cups. He got to the quarter-final of the, FI, at the EFL Cup, so that's not too bad, but uh, yeah, second sacking of the season potentially upcoming. The Brighton manager, Graham Potter, was sacked a few weeks ago, um, and Michael O'Neill, the former Stoke boss, has taken over there. So we have got our match against Aston Villa today. Potentially a nice Christmas surprise, and we can take four wins from the last five. But of course, it is another away match, so that is something to bear in mind. But we have break, broken that duck against Sheffield United, and hopefully that wasn't just a fluke. One bit of team news you will notice is that John Ruddy is in the net because Rui Patricio is out for this game. He's got a virus, not Corona. He's got a virus for the next two weeks. We've sent him home just to make sure he doesn't infect any of the other members of the squad. There are a lot of games over the next two weeks. He's just been infected with this virus. So if you look at the schedule, that will infect all the way from now, probably up to the Cardiff game, maybe thereafter, up to Leicester. So... Hopefully, John Ruddy will put a good shift in. He's a good backup goalkeeper. Um, I'm more than happy with him being the goalkeeper for us. But, in another twist of fate, our third choice goalkeeper is injured. Andreas Sondergaard is currently injured. He's out for a few days with a cold. So, Joe O'Shaughnessy, the 17-year-old Irishman, is on the bench. So, I really, really, really hope that Ruddy doesn't get injured or else that could be um, a real worry, having to put our 17-year-old youngster in the net um, but you know he's the next choice goalkeeper so we've got to put him on the bench but apart from that absolutely no change we're in very good form why would we change the squad but Aston Villa haven't had a bad start um, to this league it's not been great but uh, oh Emiliano, Emiliano Martinez is out today so that's that seems pretty good um, not a lot to say about Bolly. I think he's got 18 months left on his contract, so I'm really not concerned about that. But to be fair, Tom Heaton starts for Aston Villa, so it's not like he's a terrible backup. Interestingly, Leicester have beaten Manchester City, so that's a Boxing Day surprise. Uh, Man City have started the league very well. They haven't lost many, but 10 minutes in here. Adama Traore is in the box and puts it just over the head of Tom Heaton. He obviously wasn't worried about that because... He was just quite happily standing there and, and didn't really care. But I'll tell you what, our possession game is really working well. 20 minutes in here, we've had 65% of possession. But clearly in football, possession isn't everything. We go 19 minutes in and Trezeguet from that free kick scores the opener for Aston Villa. 
Uh, obviously, we did beat Aston Villa 2-0 at the Molyneux. And uh, it's not going to be another clean sheet today, but it would be great to get the bragging rights of uh, a double win against Aston Villa. Six points against them. Nice tackle from Daniel Podence, who shoots from there, but that was a really poor shot from there. But we are making the chances. I'm happy to see that. Uh, four shots. Only one of them on target, which is a little bit of a worry. Yes, I think we do work the ball into the box because from evidence there, that was a long-range opportunity and, and quite a poor one, as you could see. We've already had two opportunities that have been fairly poor from there. But let's see what happens from this highlight. 32 minutes in. Villa have got the ball. Hopefully they give it away for this pass. But no, a good pass there to Trezeguet. Hmm, are they going to make it 2-0 here? Matt Target on the wing. We're not really pressuring him all that much. That's a bit of a worry. But Semedo puts a good tackle in. That's more like we want to see. A good pass from Neves. But uh, just a little bit too much on it, really. So if that um, does gift them a goal, then that might be a worry. But a cracking header there from Semedo. Good ball from Triro. Raul Jimenez is one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And Raul Jimenez scores his eighth goal of the season. And uh, it's not going to be a clean sheet for the Villa either. A fantastic goal there from Raul Jimenez. A brilliant clearance here. Firstly from Semedo. A really strong header there to beat Trezeguet. Cracking run from Adama Traore. Got the pass just right. And equally Raul Jimenez does a brilliant job to thump it past Tom Heaton at uh, the near post. And that is an absolutely cracking shot from Raul Jimenez and uh, it's one each but let's see if the action continues will we hold the one point for very long Matty Cash into the box Douglas Dewey shoots and thank goodness for us it is way over the bar but I think that unless he played that very low um, that John Ruddy has got that pretty much covered but 59% uh, of possession we're looking good here and uh, half time it is one each I'm fairly happy with that RXG far and above what uh, Aston Villa is apparently our long range passing is appalling but yeah, I, I'm not too fussed about that. Um, we're not doing badly at all. I think that that's the right ch shout to have here. We're going to go for an attacking mentality, or we might have to change that if Villa score off this corner, because just above um, the bar. But uh, we're going to encourage our players. We're going to go with an attacking mentality. We've had 60% of possession. Surely it is time to hammer the advantage home. And could that happen? A brilliant pass from Jimenez to Traore. And uh, Tom Heaton does very well there to get to the ball. Seems like um, Tottenham are beating Newcastle, so Jose Mourinho might live to fight another day. But Moutinho tries to put a cross in, but it goes out for a corner. We are definitely on top here, and I feel like a goal is coming. Our XG now is over one. We've had ten shots, four of them on target. And uh, he hasn't featured very much this year, but it might well be Balotelli time soon. But what was that? What was that? Apparently, we've had all the play based on possession, but that was really sloppy. Villa take the lead. That's a shock. Good uh, throwing from Matty Cash, but it was just far too easy. Far too easy for the Villa there. We also almost looked in shell shock, and they take the lead for the second time. 20, 28 minutes to go. How do we do this? I mean, 92% of passes complete. I don't buy that long-range passes is dreadful thing. I think um, it is time for a few changes. I think we're going to bring Petro Neto on. For Daniel Podence, who hasn't had the best game in the world today. Um, and we're also going to... Uh, I want to bring Balotelli on. And I'm going to play with a 4 triple 2 formation. Really try and go attacking here again. We've got nothing to lose. We are behind here. So I don't think there's any harm in that. Bring Jimenez back to a supporting role. Um, anything we want to change here. I don't think there is. I don't think there's anything we need to change here. Hopefully we just get the breaks. We're definitely playing well enough in terms of chance creation. So we'll see if we can do anything here. I mean, I'd take a point against the Villa, to be quite honest. It's a local derby, so the away crowd is going to put pressure on our guys. But 1.5 is our XG. Surely we can get something out of this game. Let's see what happens with 13 minutes to go. Pedro Neto loses the ball. Far too sloppy there. We've got a 93% pass completion rate, but it just seems that those few passes we are indeed uh, missing are really costing us. But a brilliant uh, interception there from Nelson Samado. He's done brilliantly. And could it be another chance that he creates? Hmm, a disputable challenge there. Adama into Jimenez. Jimenez into the box. What was that, though, from Raul Jimenez? Very bizarre, but it runs back to Balotelli. Neves, Martinho, Adama, Troyeray. How did he miss that? How did he miss that? He didn't even get it on target. That is a travesty. How we are behind in this game, I have absolutely no idea. Villa have absolutely robbed us. We're going to bring Den Donker on from Martinho, who seems absolutely cream crackered. Swap Neves. And Dendonga about because uh, Neves is the more attacking player. McGinn into the box. Bolly gets it out. Could this be the start of a counter-attack? Balotelli needs to be really winning those. But a good tackle 
from Den Donker. It goes straight back to the Villa, though. John McGinn to Wesley to Trezeguet. This doesn't look good, but Aitnori wins it. Puts it back to his goalkeeper. And Ruddy really needs to be increasing the pace here. Chucks it out. Ball to Adama Traore. Mario Balotelli. One more with Tom Heaton, but just not enough. A good defensive uh, charge from Tyro Mings there. We've got seven minutes left. Leeds United lead at Old Trafford. Uh, that is quite a shock, given United are top of the table at the moment. But a few Boxing Day shocks seeming to be all around the league. But we are really pushing forward now. I think it is time to go very attacking here. Uh, just try and get a point out of this game. We've got nothing to lose. We are behind. We're not going to get a point anyway. Um, if we don't go that attacking, that is. I'm not saying in general we're not going to get a point. But if we don't try and buy a ticket, we're never going to win the raffle, are we? But if we go and lose 3-1 whilst trying, well, at least we've tried rather than just sat back. This could be 3-1 though. Matty Cash on the wing. Eight Nuri. Good tackle from him. Raul Jimenez to Neto. And it doesn't quite happen there. But an XG of nearly two. Um... It feels like we've made the chances and we are going to be a bit, little bit harshly done to here. One minute to go and Aston Villa have beaten us. That is harsh. Um, I think we were the better team. Ultimately, though, we just didn't make it pay. Um, seven shots of our 17 on target. That's not even 50%. A little bit of a disappointment, but uh, our XG was far and beyond above Aston Villa. Some positive signs, though. Traore, Jimenez and Eight Nuri, the, the highlights from today's game. Uh, let's have a look at Aston Villa. Wesley played well from then, as well as McGinn. Barkley. Uh, Trezeguet obviously didn't have a good game. I say that because he scored, but only got a 6.8 rating. So the rest of his game uh, must have been quite poor. But uh, I'm going to be angry with the players, but a little bit through gritted teeth. Because I don't think that was a bad performance. But you could equally look at that as if, well, we should have got something out of that game. All the stats say we should have got something out of that game. But the one stat that definitely doesn't lie is the scoreline at the end. Uh, what sort of effect do you think losing like that will have? Um, it's a tough one, but the players take it just fine. I'm not too fussed about that. That was rubbish, wasn't it? Disaster of a result. Well, you know, it's a derby, so I suppose we can accept that. Tottenham uh, beat Newcastle 4-1, so they move out of the relegation zone. Southampton and Sheffield United still in there. A draw against Everton. A point for both of the bottom sides, actually. So all of the bottom three... Uh, get points. That means that West Ham now moving to that bottom three. Newcastle close towards the drop, but 19 points after 14 games. I think we'll take that. We've got Manchester United up next, and we can take some hope that Leeds have actually beaten them today, but I can't see us getting much against United given that uh, we were beaten 5-0 by them last time out. But we have got that omen. Uh, we are unbeaten at the Molyneux. So let's see what happens in the next match. But that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. A disappointing... Um, loss against Aston Villa. I'd have liked to have picked up at least one point there, but it wasn't to be. We were definitely the better team, and sometimes it just happens that way, doesn't it? So uh, we're going to play the Manchester United, Crystal Palace, and probably Cardiff games off camera, and uh, I feel like those Leicester and Brighton games is a natural time to come back. Uh, maybe the Brighton and Leicester at home, actually. We've played two away games today. Why not play the two home games? We'll play the four games off camera and then come back for Brighton and Leicester. I don't see the point of playing the likes of Chelsea, Man City on camera at this point of the season. It's really the games like the ones against Villa, the ones against Sheffield United and Newcastle, where we should be getting the points. But look at it positively. From the last five games, we've got nine points. It was a real blip against Manchester United, but we are starting to play well. Maybe the scoreline not showing it today. But, you know, I am more than happy with that. I think that we're not going to get anything against Manchester United. So I'd like to get the three points against Crystal Palace. And those games against Brighton uh, and Leicester are where we should look to definitely hammer home the advantage. Because uh, usually at Boxing Day, 19 games have been played. But because of the way this season works, only 14 have been played. But 19 points from the first 14. Take it positively that we're pretty much going to avoid a relegation. We know that already by the rule of averages. Uh, but we want, to imp we want to improve that away form. The fact we've already lost seven games is a bit of a concern. And the fact we're not maybe drawing enough games is a bit of a concern. But things are improving. We can't change what was done in the past. But it seems like we are starting a bit of a decent run of form. Not fantastic, but we can work on that. And I definitely think we can still finish in the top half. I think the likes of Fulham, Crystal Palace and Leeds are going to start to drop down. And I think that media prediction of 8th is going to be about right. But of course, we can't just sit on our laurels. We've got to continue to work. And that's exactly what we will do. 
But if you've enjoyed that, make sure to leave a like down below. Comment your thoughts as well and subscribe for daily Football Manager 21 beta content. Remember, we've got the team guides going up, of course, twice a day at 10 a.m. at 1 and 1 p.m. And of course, these videos coming out to you guys on a daily basis at 4 p.m. As I said, leave a like if you enjoyed, and I will see you guys tomorrow for part five, and hopefully. We'll have some good news in terms of victories. We might even beat Manchester United. There's nothing I'd love more as a Liverpool fan. But for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye for now.